All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the pre-K to fifth grade language screener digitally. You can, of course, print up the flip books. These are the, this is the digital version of what the flip book pages look like. You can print those up and use in person with the student while taking data using the, the Google form on your laptop or your iPad or you can pull the Google Slides up on your iPad from the Google Slides app and then take data using the form on your laptop or you can use the paper and pencil uh, items you know in your PDF download and so maybe you're just projecting these slides and taking paper paper and pencil data um, but if you want to do it digitally all the way this is how you would do it so First off, what I did was I have the Google Slides up like this. So technically, when you open up the Google form, you are going to have all these browsers, right? So there's this cool Chrome extension that I'm going to show you. And so right now, I kind of manually moved how I want things to look on the screen, right? But if you use this Chrome extension, if I can just it's called dual lists and it will automatically organize your browsers to be the dimensions that you want. Isn't that fancy? <laughs> I feel so cool. Um, so the one that I used is the seven three. So this, the stimulus items will be on the big side and the form will be on the skinny side. And then when I share my screen, you know, I'm probably not going to share this part of the screen. I'll probably share this, the, this tab only, but I will be able to see it on my end. So, so what you're going to do is you're going to fill out the student. You're going to go up here to preview and this is what it will look like. Okay. And you're going to fill in the student's name, date of birth, you can put their age in date, the date you're administering it. And then on each of the, the slides, it's going to have the stimulus item, what you're going to say, and it's also on the form. And it will tell you what page to be on with the slides. So I would say before you underline the dog, circle the bird. So when you're in the Google Slides, do not click present. If you click present, the child will not be able to do anything with the slide. So you're going to want to be in edit mode. Um, if you're using this in Zoom, you can definitely just give them mouse control and give them the annotation feature and they can draw and underline themselves. But if you find that you need these movable pieces, these are here for you. So I forget what you had to do before you underline the dot. Okay. Okay, um, that student got that answer correct, so you would click correct. Okay, and so you're going to continue to click click correct or incorrect. Then we're going to go down here. Um, tell me, name the opposite of dirty, you know, messy, uh-oh. And so as you continue to go down, you're going to take data on, you know, what the student is able to do. And I'm just kind of clicking. And by the way, this is the third through fifth, fifth section. And what I did here is, so when you get down to here, this is looking at how well can they describe items by attributes. And so you're going to say, tell me what is chocolate. And you can even remind them, like, tell me all the things you can about chocolate. And then, you know, I put in the correct and gave some examples of what correct would be. And then here's a spot. This would not um, be, this is not a point. This is for you to write in actually what the student says. So we're just going to keep going down. Correct. All right. So there's some more. And they're going to, and then again, with the figurative language, you'll have a space to fill in the answers, but it will not give them a point. So right now, you, this is giving them and calculating the points for the activity. And then you would get down here and you would read them a passage and the passage is the nonfiction hippopotamus passage is right here. And then you would ask them these questions. And anything that you click is giving them a point. 
then you can write your observations and you know anything that's less than 60 percent may be red flags of course this is an informal screener so you're going to use this with your clinical judgment um, and if you see that hey you know what they did pretty good overall but because they bombed this one section maybe i'll give them another informal measure or do some dynamic assessment or a little bit of pre-teach and see if their score improves before coming to like a you know a clinical decision that they need further language assessment so this is a guide to help you find some red flags or guide you with what goals they may need or where you really need to hit, you know target your formal assessments like what tests you might choose and then down here um, percentage correct and your recommendations this is optional okay we'll see student did a marvelous job and then you're going to click oops you're going to click submit you don't have to fill this out right now i'm going to show you what you're going to do so you're going to click submit all right so now you've clicked submit and if you click this button view score it will tell you how many points the student got overall 28 and let me pull up my calculator 13 divided by 28 is 46 percent so that's a little bit concerning and so this is you being able to view the score but if you go back here so this is where you were to view the score it opens up a new tab for you so you can see the score right but if you go here and you click on responses everything that there'll be a summary of how many responses but if you go to the individual responses you will be able to see what was correct and what was incorrect okay i'm going to hide this screen and I'm going to make this bigger just so we can look at the um all right so now we look at responses and we can if we go to summary we'll get to see you know an average if we were doing this with multiple students but um we're, we want to look at the individual information and so you can go back and see what was correct and incorrect um if you click view responses in sheets it will generate a screening recording form for you so everything is in here one of the things though with this screener is that it has a lot of tabs right so what i have done or what i would do because really what we're what we really want on the sheets is we want to know their score so we're going to take all of these And we're going to, I think I go up here. We're going to go to help, hide. So we're going to hide all of these. So it doesn't make it go away, it just hides all the stimulus items that I really just don't want to see right now for the purpose of just coming up with everything. So because I did the percentage, I divided 13 into 28, this student got 46% correct. And so the recommendation would be further language screen or further, further language testing. Okay, so now I have this. So every time that I give this assessment, remember I'm going to go to preview and I'm going to put in Jamal Clark. He's going to be in 11 still. I'm going to give this assessment again. You know and as we continue to go down i will be able to give this assessment and it will then record it for you so i will show you here it is so it has a timestamp. it has a score the name all the all the information so what i would definitely want to hide again is all of these boxes 
think I started to hide them. So I went to help and I went to hide. And so now the things that are here are the score. The score is also over here too. I don't know why it's over here. The percentage correct. If I actually was able to know what the score was, you know, I'm going to manually put that in. And then I record details. You could then even add a little extra tab here that said, gave information to the teacher or gave information to the parent so that you can check box that off to know that you got that step done. So that's how you're going to use these forms to just digitally collect information. When you're, when you're in the screener for responses, you're going to be able to go to the individual responses and see which ones were right and which ones were wrong. Um, and then that'll give you an idea of like what areas they may be struggling with. So I hope this was helpful. I'm going to exit out of this. Um, this is the third through fifth stimulus items. And then the K, the pre-K to second grade is here. And it has all the items that you need to get information about, you know, the student. And whichever grade, you know, if you're going to do a screener for the K2, pre-K to 2, or third through fifth, these are the stimulus items. So I hope this is helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions on how to navigate everything. I'm here to help. Um, I know that sometimes it can be a lot to navigate new tools, but this may really help streamline some of that data collection that you can get virtually, but even the data collection that you collect in person. So I hope you have a great rest of your week or weekend whenever you're watching this. And just remember, be the SLP that every kid wants to see. Talk to you later.